Hey everyone, um, welcome back to the adventures of Terrapin the Hobbit Rogue. Um, you can see I'm not in the terminal right now, I'm in fact on the hard fought website. Um, and the reason for that is uh, the new moon hit me pretty hard. Not only did one of my previous videos not record any sound, um, but the pl gameplay I'm about to show you, um, my screencasts program didn't save the video after I was done with it. So I don't actually have a recording of me playing it live. Um, so I thought I might as well uh, use the TTY Rack player um, online at Hard Fought. Um, it's pretty new, um, so you might not have heard of it, but it's really useful and it's uh, still getting worked on and improved, which is real neat. So if you go to the NetHack tab on the main website, you can go to TTYREX here. This has been here for a while, um, and you can click on a server and a variant, and then look up a player, and you get all the TTYREX. But it used to be all you could do with them is download them, which you can still do by clicking on the download link here. Now, however, if you click on uh, the, the main date part of the link. You get taken to the online TTYREC viewer. Um, and you can see you've got some buttons at the top for going to the beginning, going backward and forward frames. And I think this button is actually new from the last time I've used this, so that's cool. Um, you can stop and start. I have no idea what this button does. Um, and this adjusts the speed, specifically the delay between each frame. So this is fast, this is really slow. Uh, so, with all that said, um, I think we can get started. Um, so you can see um, we left off last time when I just killed a player monster, a convict. Um, I picked up some um, a little bit of loot. I got like some speed boots, I think. I don't know if I've identified them as speed boots yet, but they are. And a grappling hook, um, which I will probably not use, but if I like drop something in water, then it may be that at some point I would find it useful to hook it out of the water with a grappling hook. Um, they actually, in the upcoming version, they will have an even more niche use, um, which is cheesing demon lords. <laughs> um, so in the current version, and in, indeed in vanilla, although I don't know if anyone's ever noticed it in vanilla because there's less reason to try. Um, but if you're underwater, you normally can only you, you, you can only attack monsters that you can see, which are monsters that are also on water squares, because when you're underwater you can't see anything but water squares. Um, but they don't actually have to be swimming. So if they're flying above the water, or levitating, or clinging, or whatever, you can see them, and you can hit them. But the monster code is defined differently, so that if you're underwater, they can't hit you, unless they're also underwater. Um, which means that you can hit flying monsters when you're underwater, and they can't do anything about it. Uh, so one Evoc player that really likes playing Tortles, which inherently can swim, and therefore find it pretty easy to go underwater. Found this out and used it to kill several demon lords with impunity, which is hilarious and clever, but also not like very balanced gameplay-wise. So the next version, 0.8.2 of Evil Hack, is going to fix that, um, and you won't be able to attack um, flying monsters with normal melee attacks anymore. But there's still a couple ways you can attack them, and they still can't attack you. And in particular, one of them is by applying a grappling hook. Um, and I'd say that's the most feasible way to cheese demon lords now, although it requires some flail skill to do it reliably and to do much damage. Um, and also iron hooks are not great weapons. They can't be silver. I think they can be branded. Um, or like have an object property because they're probably a weapon tool. Um, but 
the point is they don't do that much damage. Um, and monsters can attack you with spells, so most super scary enemies, they tend to have spells. A lot of the demon lords have spells, stuff like that. Um, so you're, you can still get in trouble from those. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're like a turtle priest or something that can get really high flail skill and might have it already, then I'd say grappling hook, hook isn't the worst thing to carry around for hard enemies. Of course, it has to be rust proof. Um, regardless, I'm certainly not going to use it for that in this game. Um, but it's I'd rather have it around and not need it than need it to pick up, you know, the amulet of Yendor that I dropped in lava <laughs> um, and not have it. Uh, so I've just carried down, gotten down to my stash level again. I'm carrying a bunch of stuff from Sokoban. Um, so I'm going to dump that in my stash. And actually, I'm going to speed this up a bit. We're going so slow. Um, yeah, so I have a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, most of it um, is not identified yet. But on my most recent delve into the depths of, into the, you know, deeper levels, I found a whole bunch of identify scrolls. And then I also found one on a shop, in a shop, if you recall. Uh, so I have eight identify scrolls now. Um, and therefore I'm planning on blessed, blessing them and using them to identify stuff. Um, yeah. So, but currently I'm just dumping stuff in my, uh, in my chest, and that's going to take a little while. <laughs> okay, um, you might have missed that. It went by real quick, and I don't know how much the screen capture catches, but I poisoned my daggers, so um, I've been meaning to do that for a while, but I keep on not doing it. Finally done it, using my resources like a good player. Also renamed my wand that I thought might be secret door detection to nothing, because when I was watching the video later, I realized that it was a directional wand, which secret door, door detection is not. So that's going to be nothing. Um, yeah. So I have a bunch of white gems. I think I might have mentioned earlier that I can forge crystal plate mail with um, dilithium crystals and plate mail, like normal plate mail. Um, and there's a steel plate mail like one or two levels up for me, so that's useful. And I may or may not have enough dilithium um, to forge with it. Uh, Currently, I, just, I was dipping my unicorn horn into some potions. Um, and uh, I got one clear potion, so that'll be... I'm going over to bless some holy water, so that's useful. Uh, all the potions that could be changed by unicorn horn, except sickness, um, are things I don't really need. So... Um, you can see, uh, let's go back a few frames. Um, Mog is happy with me, granted me protection. Um, also, you can see my dexterity and constitution have been restored to their previous levels. I didn't actually notice that at the time, but yeah, that happened. So that's useful. I think I'm at 10 points of protection now, which is just great. Um, I should, probably should have dropped my luck stone before praying because I might have gotten crowned and I don't really want that right now. Um, there's not as many benefits as there could be right now for that. So, yeah, but it worked out fine. Um, so yeah, I just blessed my ID scrolls. I think my luck stone too, because why not? So, um, yeah, I'm going to start identifying stuff. Obviously, my scrolls are... And potions are really important. Rings as well. 
I have a couple amulets that I want to identify. Some of them might be something good. Um, so right now I'm just dropping all the stuff that I don't need to identify. Either it's already fully identified or it's like good enough. Um, so most of my weapons, other than my main ones, I already know the enchantments of most of them or don't care about it in terms of the Ath in, ca in the case of the Athame. Um, and yeah, I'm, now I'm just going to take out everything I need. Um, there's a new scroll in Evil Hat called Scroll of Magic Detection, um, and what it does is an uncursed one. If you read it, it uh, it like it sort of works like object detection, but it only detects magical items. So that's weapons and armor with O props, um, magical armor like uh, cloak of magic resistance, stuff like that, um, artifacts obviously, and wands, mag um, magical potions, which is to say stuff other than the obviously mundane things like booze, sickness, fruit juice, um, and uh, rings and scrolls as well. So um, a blessed scroll not only shows you where they all are on a level, but it also identifies what their magical property is. Um, I believe this means it identifies potions and scrolls. But I could be wrong. Um, so that's actually something to keep in mind. Um, but currently I don't know what it is. Don't know what scroll it is. And I probably don't have any. Um, so I'm just sticking with normal identifying scrolls. Um, you can see actually I've read one scroll of identify. And the very first one identified my whole inventory, which was pretty lucky. I'm just scrolling back so you can see the whole inventory. Um, we got some nice scrolls, enchant armor and enchant weapon, um, a scroll of genocide, which is nice, gold detections, menu color is screwed up, which is not as nice, but whatever. Um, taming is always good to have. Um, the gain ability came from a stack of four, so I have four of those, which is fun. Um, only have the one gain level, but that's so cool. I have a couple paralysis of varying BUCs. Um, and yeah, restorability is good to have, although cursed obviously isn't. Uh, Ring-wise, free action is amazing. I have two of those. They're both cursed, but I'm still going to put it on because <laughs> it's great to have. Um, gain strength could be helpful if I need the carrying capacity. It can increase my damage a little bit. I think it's just a point, but it's there. Rings of increased damage are nice to have ID'd, even though this one's obviously not useful. And polymorph control is also great, although again, not currently terribly important. Um, and then regeneration is amazing, so that adjustment is great, especially for Hobbit. And warning is incredible. So I'm definitely going to be wearing the warning ring. Um, it's certainly useful in any NetHack variant for catching mindless monsters. Um, and a lot of mindless monsters are also not invisible, like zombies and the like. Um, but an evil hack warning is even more important. Um, You've got gelatinous cubes, obviously they're mindless and don't have warm blood. Um, since I have free action now, I'm not as worried about them, although they're still the strangling is still worrying. I just have more turns to react to it. Um, the worst threat, though, is beholders. Um, they, they almost make warning necessary, I'd say. Like, it's not totally necessary, but in the same way you wouldn't want to go do too deep in the dungeon without reflection or disintegration resistance. You don't want to go too deep without warning either. Um, basically for the same reasons that you might get insta-killed. Um, so Beholders are uh, an, a new evil hack enemy. They're actually, there's code for them in vanilla too. It just isn't implemented. Um, so they have a, a disintegration gaze attack as well as cancellation, stoning, slowing, and sleeping. I think that's it. But basically just all the nastiest effects stacked on top of each other, except sleep, which is kind of lame, but it's, it's still there. Um, and pretty much the only defense against them is to, to blind yourself. Um, if you have disintegration resistance, then that's not a worry for you anymore, but uh, the slowing and cancellation are always a concern. Um, so I know in vanilla, slowing just 
removes intrinsic speed. So like skeleton slow attacks just make you no longer intrinsically fast, which hardly ever matters because normally you're extrinsically fast by the time you're facing those sorts of enemies anyway. Um, in Evil Hack, it doesn't remove intrinsic speed, which is kind of nice, I guess, but it does make you, in the moment, like for a couple turns, maybe a dozen, um, it makes you slow, like so, like like you've been hit with a wand of slow monster, sort of. So you are two thirds your base speed, um, and it ignores any intrinsic or extrinsic speed you ha might have. Those are just temporarily totally suppressed. So slowing is really scary. Um, regardless, uh, beholders are. I'm not sure if they're technically mindless or not. I think they are. They're mindless. Yes. I'm gonna go with that. They certainly don't show up in ESP, though, is um, my point. And so the only way you can see them is if... The, the only way you can see, like, the purple E that represents them is if you actually have your eyes on them, at which point they're disintegrating or canceling you. Um, so warning always shows them as a purple 5, and therefore if you see a purple 5, you can put on a blindfold for a couple turns, um, and go up to it and hit it, and if it's a beholder, it'll die in a couple hits, and everything will be fine. Um, sometimes it's like an iron golem instead. Those are still scary, but not not as terrifying as a beholder, and the same strategy more or less works. <laughs> like, there are better strategies than just going up and melaying an iron golem, but it works fine because they're not that powerful. Um, anyway, you can see here I'm fighting a water elemental, also, these are pretty scary in Evil Hack. So all the elementals in Evil Hack have engulfing attacks. Um, and the water elementals one is drowning, um, which is kind of like the gelatinous cubes um, strangulation attack. In fact, it's entirely the same, except turtles uh, don't get drowned, but they do get strangled. Um, which is the only difference. So I don't want to get drowned, and also it can rust my gear. So. I couldn't throw my daggers at it, um, so I just zapped my magic missile a whole bunch and then took a couple hits in melee to kill it, so it worked out fine. Um, but they're probably my least favorite elemental type. Honestly, all the elementals are my least favorite. Air, element, air elementals show up early and do crazy damage and they're fast. Fire elementals destroy all your, all your stuff. Earth elementals are just tough. They're probably my least least favorite elemental. Because um, at least they're kind of slow, and they don't have any super special effects that are annoying. Um, yeah. So I've kind of lost the plot a little. I have no idea what we're doing right now. Um, contrary to my... or my flawless cuts might not show it, but I actually have been doing this recording in a couple different sessions to make sure the videos are short. Um, in hopes that it'll help with the sound issues. It mostly has. I had to re-record a couple of minutes because the sound went wonky for one of the clips. Um, but anyway, the upshot is I th don't really know where we are anymore. I think we're going back up to Sokoban. Oh, right now we're digging um, for a vault. There's a vault on this floor. We found that out a while back. And I haven't found it yet, so... Um, I'm checking out where that could be. Evidently it is not over here. Um, yeah. So, let's see, what are some big picture things that we're thinking about right now? Um, we're about halfway to experience level 13, so I think um, what I was thinking at the moment was like, I want to finish up getting st all this stash stuff from Sokoban moved down. And while I was on the way there, I decided to deal with the vault as well. Um, and uh, after that, I'm planning on heading deeper into the dungeon and just killing stuff until my experience gets higher. Um, there's no like particular uh, milestones special monsters or branches that I pr feel particularly like it's time for me to do at this moment. 
So it's just kind of normal main dungeon stuff, um, which is cool. I think sometimes I feel like maybe there's just a little too much special content. Um, I mean, I don't want to get bored by the main dungeon, but sometimes it feels like you don't spend enough time in the main dungeon to really appreciate it. I don't know. I think I, I just think that like a lot of variants, including Evil Hack, do a good job of spicing up the main dungeon so that there's not as much need for special content like side branches to make it to make the game interesting. But you know, I'm not going to complain if there's more interesting stuff either. You can see we found Ludios. Um, Always a relief to know that it's generated, got lots of good equipment and stuff that um, can show up. You've also got dragons. Um, dragons in Evil Hack are, uh, they're buffed. Um, so most types of dragons have um, intrinsics. So um, they have extra intrinsics. So like blue dragons aren't just lightning breathing and shock resistant, but they are also fast. Um, white dragons have a passive freeze, maybe? I think that might... I don't really know what white dragons do. Um, red dragons, I think, might do extra damage. Uh, gray dragons have a passive cancellation attack, which is super annoying, because um, it makes it hard to hit, hit them with weapons. Uh, yeah, so um, black dragons have a passive disintegration, which I've talked about, I believe. But anyway, um, so it makes dragons a little scary to face. On the other hand, their dragon scales also grant these intrinsics, or extrinsics, rather, when they're um, made into body armor. So scales work differently in... Man, these, these frames are taking forever. I'm going to speed it up. Um... I'm just looking at each of the dragons to see what they are. So, uh, okay, we're out again. Um, so, dragon skills take up the cloak slot in Evil Hack. They're different, and when you enchant them, they don't become dragon scale mail, but they instead meld to whatever body armor you're wearing. Um, and they increase its AC by like five, I think. And they also make it grant two in extrinsics, or almost always two anyway. So black dragon scales give you disintegration resistance, and they also give, make it so that you passively disintegrate monsters that hit you. Um, so it does some damage, sometimes it disintegrates their weapon, or sometimes just... I don't think it ever disintegrates them fully. No, I think it might, like a 1 in 20 chance or something. I don't know. Um, gray dragons sometimes cancel enemies that attack you. Uh, white dragon scales freeze water and lava underfoot, which is surprisingly useful. Um, stuff like that. So, um, in Ludios, there is the important ones, I guess, were White Dragon, which I already just said had the freezing thing, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also a Yellow Dragon. Their skills grant Acid and Stoning Resistance, which are both not required, but certainly can be helpful. I don't think I'd use the scales, though. Um, Gold Dragon scales grant Light, like a Magic Lamp, sort of, um, except it depends on the BUC of this armor. Um, so um, Blessed Scales give the same as a Magic Lamp. Uncursed Scales only give like a candle's radius of light. And I don't know if Cursed Gold Dragon Scales give any light at all. Um, I mean, maybe they technically make the squares around you light instead of dark, but I don't know if that ever matters. Um, because you can see the squares next to you regardless of whether they're light or dark. Uh, anyway, um, besides the light effect, which is always helpful but isn't necessary if you end up finding a magic lamp or whatever, um, they also give, give sickness resistance. And that's the only way, I, as a neutral, that I can get it. Besides, there's also a one-tenth chance of getting it when you get crowned. But, I mean, it's a one-tenth chance, so... Um, it's quite likely that the only way I can be sick resistant is by wearing gold skill, gold, gold scaled armor. Um, so if and when a gold dragon drops scales, I think it's quite likely that at the very least I'll like use them to scale like a leather armor or something so that I can wear it against any enemies that 
um, are pretty scary in terms of sickness. So like Dweeblex or Demogorgon, I think he has sickness attacks. Anyway, um, stuff like that. It could be useful. Um, yeah. So right now, what I don't even know what I'm doing. Um, oh, I was looking for where to teleport. Anyway, um, picked up the scale mail. Oh, I actually missed. I tried to forge it with some dilithium crystals, two dilithium crystals, and it didn't work because you need three dilithium crystals. So yeah, I'm on the lookout for one of those, but for now I'm stuck. Um, it, it was like 20 minutes past 10 o'clock uh, server time when I found that gremlin. So could have stolen an intrinsic from me if I would tried to melee it, but I was good. Took it out from range. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the stash. Uh, Spellbooks, I think, are mostly named now, which is nice. Um, so that they're like level ID and all that. My intelligence is still bad. Um, I need like a couple more intelligence at the very least before um, I can even successfully, guaranteed successfully read level one spellbooks. So I think it's four more intelligence. It would be 12 plus four plus six. It's 22. Yeah, that, that's it. I'd need 12 intelligence to read them successfully all the time. Um, I guess I do have two dusty spell books, so I could maybe read one of those just to see what it is. And if it disintegrates, then I just won't read the other one until I have until I'm sure I can do it successfully. Um, what else is happening? I think I'm just making sure, oh yeah, making sure I put the cancellation ones in my chest so I don't have them in inventory and have to worry about them exploding my bag. And, uh, yeah, just doing a little bit of basic inventory management, making sure, like, everything's all squared away before I go down. Um, so one thing is gaining ability. I only use two of my four potions. Um, the reason for that is just, so Wisdom's the only trait I can still exercise, um, but with my automatic searching and stuff, I'm doing a decent job of exercising it, and I've gotten increases two or three times already. So I figured I might as well just keep it a little low um, so I can exercise it better and maybe get like an extra point out of Wisdom before I drink the other gain abilities. Um, it's not like I'm using my Intelligence or Charisma anyway, so... Oh, and that's it for this session. So we're going to switch to our next one. I've got some elven daggers too, so that so they're lighter and made of wood, so they're good against rusty enemies. Um, I can throw them further, um, which is sort of a concern with my low strength. I mean, I can still throw metal daggers, daggers like eight or nine squares, but um, not, not like max range or anything. Uh... Yeah, so, um, there's, yeah, I just, I, when I was going over to the jelly, I had no idea it was there, and I was actually aiming to get to the downstairs and just totally went the wrong way. But when I killed it and I found the corpse, I was like, oh yeah, I should sacrifice stuff, I guess, if it's around. So I go on a little sacrificing spree. Really, really good gifts. Um, the only things I could want more than them, I think, are fri Fire and Frostbane. And to get both of them, you pretty much just have to Alter Farm or Wish for One, which I don't want to do. Um, so that's the breaks. Uh, yeah, other neutral... Like, I'm trying to think if there are other good neutral longswords. There's definitely fewer than in vanilla because a lot of artifacts have had their base type changed. So like Demon Bane's a mace, Dragon Bane's gloves, as you already know. Um, I'm trying to get this hill giant onto the altar because I'm pretty sure I won't be able to pick it up. But then I realized that since it's a sanctuary, it won't follow me in anyway. Um, so I just killed it, and indeed I couldn't pick it up. So I ate it instead. 
anyway, um, and yeah, there are some other base type changes. I can't think of any off the top of my head. Giant Slayer, it's a spear now. Was it always a spear? I think it used to be a longsword, maybe. Um, honest, because most of the artifacts that have had their base types changed are like the super lame bange that nobody ever used anyway. So I don't even know what they are in vanilla because I never used them. Um, point is, there's not that many other neutral longswords that I think would get gifted to me. Um, there's some, like, the Sun Sword is a good longsword, but it's lawful. Dirge is a good longsword, but it's chaotic. Excalibur is lawful. Um, yeah, so, I don't know, if, if they just happen to generate, I'd certainly make use of one or two of those. I don't think it would, I'd ever waste a wish on one of them, though. Because um, I have perfectly decent options. of Frost or something like that would be pretty much as good. <laughs> um, and uh, and if I, either I could wish for one and be guaranteed success compared to an artifact, which is not guaranteed since I've already wished for one already, um, or I could wish for, say, so like it's I think I already have a silver short sword, for instance. It's pretty certain that you'll find silver stuff that you can forge into other silver stuff. Um, so really the only uncertainty is if I'll find a good object property to forge into a katana. So yeah, wishing for a weapon with object properties is better. I, it's, it's more certain. I mean, you can always get one as opposed to only having a chance of getting an artifact after you've wished for one or more already. Um, one fun fact is, so similar to how you can wish for a Scrolls of Charging or you can wish for a Magic Marker and be able to get Scrolls of Charging plus other stuff with a little bit of work, um, you can get more than just one weapon with an object property if you're willing to do some work. Um, if you wish for ammo, um, just like in vanilla you can get up to 20 pieces of ammo. Uh, so if you wish for 20, say, darts of fire, you can forge pairs of darts um, into ten weapons of fire, as long as you have the other ingredients that you need and enough forges. Um, each time you forge a weapon with an object, or anything with an object property, there's a one-sixth chance that the forge will cool down and disappear. Um, but usually there's a good number of forges in the dungeon, so that can be a neat way to um, up the bang for your buck. <laughs> It's, I think, of particular relevance to rogues or other uh, roles that are relying on daggers, because you can get a stack of ten magic daggers instead of just, like, two or three, which is definitely not worth a wish. Um, so it's it's possible that I'll, like, maybe wish for sylvan elven arrows, like, twenty silver elven arrows of frost or something like that, so I can get silver elven daggers of frost um, when I forge them with enough uh, daggers. Uh, if I have like 10 daggers to forge the arrows with. So, um, or it would be, yeah, is that right? Dagger plus, or maybe it's darts plus elven arrows for elven daggers. That, yeah, that sounds right. Anyway, um, that, that might be a good wish for me. Uh, if I don't find any other, uh, weapons with object properties or, um, at least like some nice silver stuff. I have eight silver elven arrows right now, but that's only enough for four daggers and that's not really a good stack. Um, yeah, I think it'll be neat to consider some possible wishes for daggers or forging for daggers or stuff like that. You can see we're back on the cockatrice level. At first I was gonna just go in and attack them, but after consideration I decided not to. Um, Daggers aren't amazing for taking out like a horde of enemies. And I really don't want to get stoned um, because I don't have any way to gain back intrinsic speed at the moment other than like praying to my god, obviously. But that's, you know, risk. It, it's not certain that I'd get speed then. Um, so I don't have a wand to speed monster or quantum mechanic or anything like that. So I just decided 
I'll leave them be for now. It's not super important that I kill them immediately. Um, you can see there's a bunch of dragons on this level. I believe yellow, gold, and black are the three types. Um, I have reflection, so black's not totally terrifying, but still pretty terrifying. Uh, yeah, so um, it, since they're grouped together, it's presumably a throne room, and indeed when I put on my towel to check, it was a throne room. Um, most of the other monsters other than the dragons didn't seem too scary, which is good. Um, and so yeah, at the time I decided I might as well just try taking them on, seeing what happens. Um, I was really hoping to get the uh, black dragon corpse for disintegration resistance, because it would be real nice to have, um, you know, just to have some disintegration resistance, it's always good. Uh, proof against beholders, if nothing else. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, I'm getting to the point where I like feel like I'm maybe okay facing a dragon or two. I th I think it was still like even at the time I thought it was a little risky, but I just really wanted the black dragon corpse. Um, and in retrospect, it was definitely too risky to take on three, and especially a black dragon. Um, they their disintegration breath is does one d two fifty five damage, I believe. Um, reflection halves breath damage. So it's down to like 1d, 120-ish. Um, but that's still easily enough to one-shot me, as you can tell um, from my HP. So, yeah, pretty stupid idea. <laughs> um, it's easy to underestimate black dragons because their damage is so swingy. Um, and because generally you only try to face them when you have a, some amount of disintegration resistance already, which further reduces their breath damage. But uh, yeah, they're terrifying. Um, and I'm sturdy for a hobbit, but that's not sturdy, like generally speaking. Um, the acid and gold dragons don't scare me at all, really. Um, and maybe they should, well, their breath doesn't scare me because I'm resistant to acid from Dragon Bane and fire from eating corpses. Um, that said, you'll see in a second why I should still be scared of dragons because I went up to melee this gold dragon and it promptly took me down to very low health. Um, I did not have my spring of slow digestion out. I had to take it out and put it on to get out of there. Um, that was stupid of me. But even if I'd been totally prepared, um, dragons just do a lot of damage. Um, so yeah, uh, I did a couple different sessions. That was the second one, I think. Um, so this third session um, should be the last one, I think. Um, I was trying to, whoop, that went too fast. I was trying to make it easier on my screencast program um, by doing short videos and it didn't really work. Um, but right now I actually just downloaded in some new software that's hopefully more robust. So we'll see how that works out. Um, hopefully we won't run into sound issues as much anymore. Uh, there were two cases where I, there was like five seconds cut out where I just put in text over them. Um, those were like the only things small enough that I felt like I didn't have to re-record. I had to re-record like a good 20 minutes at the start, and then all of this right now is actually a re-recording. Because um, I played this through to the end with my other software, and like all of it was just no sound. <laughs> Um, hill giant shamans can be pretty scary, and um, even though I was starting to feel like maybe I didn't want to face the dragons, um, I I wanted to kill the shaman um, because they can cast summon insects, which includes locusts, which can make you sick. Um, I don't have any sickness resistance, and lots of characters don't. So 
Yeah, clerical spell, uh, cler clerical spellcasters can be pretty dangerous, um, even on you know in the end game where you have tons of priests summoning insects. Um, it can still be scary depending on your character, um, whether they have sickness resistance. So um, that's always something to keep an eye out for. After that, uh, Black Dragon hit me with breath and did a good amount of damage on top of the fact that I knew I probably couldn't kill him easily since uh, uh, if I hit him, uh, the scales would disintegrate my weapons, or there'd be a good chance of it anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'm just leaving this level alone. Um, and... Since I have Dragon Bane, I can always see where the Black Dragon is. It's reasonably easy to avoid him. Um, so, I actually, I'm going to nip back to the throne room, because there's a throne there, so I can sit on that and see what's up. My luck's pretty high, because I was sacrificing recently, so that's good. Um, one thing that's... Uh, yeah, so then you can see... Um, there's the normal throne room an acid sphere, which I don't care about since I'm resistant. Um, and then you can see there's a safe here. Sometimes you get safes instead of chests in throne rooms and other similar areas. Uh, so that can be annoying if you don't have a stethoscope, but I do. Um, one thing that isn't great is I didn't put my gold in my bag, so I could have lost it, theoretically. Um, that's one of the throne effects, but I didn't. So all is, all is well this time. On the other hand, I didn't actually get anything good from the throne either, which is annoying. I haven't really had much luck with thrones this run. Um, yeah, so I just went down to the next level and uh, found some more jumping boots, which is cool, I guess. Um, I really feel like the main dungeon is more exciting than, especially in variants like Evil Hack and others, where there's more interesting monsters and special rooms and stuff. The dungeon's main dungeon is really exciting, and I sometimes think it's a shame that it's it's pretty short, you know. Although Gehenna is pretty exciting in Evil Hack too, so that's not too much of a loss. Um, but like all the side branches that get added, I feel like part of the reason there's so many in vanilla is because the main dungeon is kind of boring sometimes. But a lot of variants do a good job of like splicing up main gameplay, so you don't feel like the side branches are as necessary. Although, of course, they're still fun. That was a Displacer Beast. It's a feline um, and has reasonably strong attacks and is fast like most felines. It also has Displacement, which is either not very important or really, really bad, depending on like what your exact positioning is. In that situation, it was a non-factor. Um, but... It was still pretty scary with its just normal attacks. I believe eating their corpses gives displacement for some amount of time. Um, yeah, so I tin the corpse in case I want that later. Currently I'm wearing a cloak, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, I'm wearing a cloak of displacement, so I'm just always displaced. But in the future I might trade that out for something else. I almost certainly will, really. Um, cloak of protection is a definite possibility. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else. Um, but yeah, currently I'm really hurting for MC, magic cancellation. So that would be nice. I have magic resistance from the PYEC, so that's fine. I don't see myself doing much spell casting, so I don't think a robe would be normal wear for me. Um, oil skin cloak is actually not horrible. There are a good number of grabby monsters. Um between the fact that hug attacks work better now, so you get like guardian naga nagas and muma kill and other s monsters that can grab you. Um, salamanders also have a drowning attack now, except they drown you in lava, which is worse, obviously. Um, so you, you don't get saved by magical breathing. Um, it's basically, if a salamander grabs you and you don't escape in one turn and you don't have life saving, you're instantly dead. If you do have life saving, I'm actually not sure. You might still be stuck in lava. I don't know how it works. Um, the one thing that will definitely save you is White Dragon Skilled armor, because uh, it, in theory, it freezes the 
lava beneath you, but in practice the salamander just doesn't drown you. Um, you can see I just found a graveyard. Um, a lot of wraiths in there. And I am, again, have not great magic cancellation. And furthermore, have, uh, have don't have level, level drain resistance. So, um, and further, furthermore, I would like to eat the wraiths at some point for experience levels, um, which would require luring them to a different level. And also, it would be nice if I was a higher experience level so I could benefit more from it. Um, but also the luring involves hanging out near raids for long periods of time, which means I'll prob they'll probably get some hits in, and I just don't want to have to deal with that. So I'm hoping not to disturb the graveyard, um, and just, again, continue. Um, at about this point, I decided maybe this is enough for the main dungeon for now. I've now skipped over portions of three levels in a row, um, which seems like a good sign to me that maybe... Uh, things are getting a bit too difficult for me here. Um, admittedly, the cockatrice thing is more of an inconvenience issue, same with the graveyard, but the black dragon was real scary. Um, and if we end up seeing more dragons further down, we probably don't want to tussle with them too much either. Um, again, somewhat depending on the types of dragons they are. Uh, so anyway, I decided to head back upstairs. There's pretty much only one other place I can go right now, which is Ludio's. So, yeah, I'm going there. Um, the soldiers shouldn't be too difficult. And it's, in general, I just feel like it's pretty easy place to flee. Um, like, in the main dungeon, you never know when something's going to sneak up behind you or what the layout's going to look like. In Ludios, you know exactly what the layout is. You can kill all the monsters like kind of going in an outward radius from the st stairs there's no covetous monsters there's no um er, there's very few like spell casting monsters and so on it's mostly just uh mostly just soldiers with attack ones which can be scary but i have reflection i have magic resistance i uh have good like intrinsics um, and non-metallic gloves, so my rings are safe. Um, I'm almost as safe from attack wands as you can possibly be. <laughs> uh, the things that will still get me a little bit are cancellation, um, which will cancel one to two items in my inventory each time I get hit, I believe. Um, unless they resist, which they can sometimes. Uh, so that's not ideal, obviously. Um, the reason it's two items is because I have, uh, spell, a uh, half spell or damage and magic resistance together. So normally it could be up to six, and with one of magic resistance and half spell damage, it's only up to three. Um, with both it's up to two. Interestingly enough, magic resistance, like, Either magic resistance or spell damage will reduce the number of items in your inventory cancelled to three. Uh, not having only having spell damage or not having either one doesn't actually make like you personally more at risk. So, if you zap cancellation at yourself, you get cancelled, and I forget exactly what that means because it's something you should never do. But I know it's bad when monsters zap cancellation at you. You never get cancelled; just items in your inventory. Um, and the only thing that magic resistance protects against that uh, spell half spell damage doesn't is if you're polymorphed into a clay golem, then it will protect you from being killed by cancellation. That's the only benefit that magic resistance specifically grants you. Um, so yeah, I didn't actually know that till recently. I always assumed it was kind of necessary uh, to to face cancellation, um, but it it isn't. Um, yeah, so Cancellation is a new spell and that some monsters can cast, and also they'll use wands against you. Uh, but they can't cancel you yourself, so it's not too horrible. Um, I'm identifying my wands real quick, because I can use the PYIEC on them if I know what their charges are. I didn't end up getting any full inventory identifies, so I ended up using like two or three and deemed that good enough for now. 
because I don't want to like end up identifying my full inventory when there's only you know a dozen ones left unidentified. It seems like a waste. Um, and then, so polymorph is not an issue with magic resistance. The other thing that can be um, an issue is wands of death. Um, so magic resistance doesn't fully protect you from it in Evil Hack. Uh, between magic resistance and reflection, damage is seriously reduced, and it won't kill me outright. But it still will drain some max HP. Um, so that goes for wands of death and also the touch of death spell. Uh, which only, obviously, magic resistance will protect against, not reflection. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot more things that can drain your max HP in Evil Hack between withering monsters, um, touch of death, and wands of death. There's a lich, unique Vecna, that is a gaze of death, although hopefully you never are actually looking at them. Um, and then Orcus, who you always encounter, has a HP draining mace as well. So... Um, between all those things, I'd say nurse dancing has maybe more use, but also is something you might want to hold off on until you're, like, maximally drained. Um, so, like, a lot of times when I get to Gehenna, I'll be like, okay, now's the time to alchemize with potions and nurse dance and all that stuff. And then I hit Orcus's level and lose, like, 50 HP. Um, and I'm like, oh, I should have saved my potions. Uh... <laughs> Because, I mean, nurses are more effective when you have low lower HP, and also Orcus drains less of your health when you have lower health. So, um, obviously you don't want to die to him, so it may be better to, uh, maybe better to buff up your HP when you can, but if you feel comfortable facing him, then there's no real reason that you should, uh, use alchemy or nurse dancing or whatever until after you've gotten that over with. Um, so yeah, I've got to Ludios, started going through the zoo. You can see there's a locust right above the Balithysirium or whatever it's called. Um, there's a cockatrice. Um, so at this point, and there's also a trapper. So I'm looking at these three monsters and they're like the, another locust. Um, all these monsters have like more or less one hit kills that they're available to them. And in fact, this locust is turning to stone. Um, I'm not sure why the cockatrice bit it or whatever, but apparently it did. Um, so I'm thinking conflict is great for this. And then I look in my bag and realize I didn't bring conflict. So I'm going to have to go back downstairs to get it. Um, what note about the locust turning to stone? You might have seen the messages or might not have, but it said like the locust limbs are stiffening, the locust is slowly turning to stone, etc. Um, so they go through the same slow stunning process as players do in Evil Hack. Um, and between that and the fact that it's pretty hard to hit with non-weapon objects, you're always capped at 75% accuracy. Um, so between that and the slow stunning rate, I'd say rubber chickening is rarely worth it, because if you have the means to easily obtain a cockatrice corpse, you probably also have a weapon that can kill a monster in fewer than like the five turns it takes to turn to stone. Um, still useful against like trolls and zombies if you don't want them to revive, but uh, I wouldn't say it's necessarily helpful against powerful monsters. Um, especially because a lot of powerful monsters also are resistant to stoning. One notable exception I think is Vecna is not resistant to stoning, nor disintegration. Um, so it's pretty easy to one-shot him if you want, but uh, there's a, a an item that he always drops, either the Hand of Vecna or the Eye of Vecna, 50% chance of each. And given that they're like parts of his body, if you stone him or if you disintegrate him, you don't get it. And it's like half the reason you... I mean, Vecna's optional, so half the reason you need even face him is because you want this item, which makes disintegration or stoning kind of counterproductive. Um, so yeah, I just checked out some of the random stuff I picked up along the way. I don't even know what I picked up, but I guess I picked up something. Um, and I'm just going to nab my Ring of Conflict. Um, real boring, but it happens. Um, yeah. So... Got my Ring of Conflict, and then I just head right back up again.
that's pretty much it. Um, I won't be able to wear both conflict and mourning at the same time, but between the fact that uh, Ludios is lower difficulty, um, being at level 12, and since I like went into it uh, a bit earlier, um, I doubt there will be too many dangerous monsters, and I don't think any beholders will spawn yet. I could probably calculate whether that's actually whether there's actually a chance of it or not, um, or maybe not calculate, but better estimate whether there's a good chance of it. Um, if I like looked up their actual levels and stuff, but that stuff's super complicated, and I don't totally understand it. And I think there's always a chance that you get out of depth, depth monsters, so. Um, it's not really worth it. Um, there is actually one <laughs> exception to that. So uh, recently I heard from the dev K2 that he'd fixed the Mines Flayers issue, um, which is when uh, Mine Flayers spawn in the mines. And literally the fix is just, if a monster is being spawned in the mines, don't make it a Master Mind Flayer or an Alhawa one. Um, and then there's a similar thing for if vampires are being spawned in Mind's End, don't make them vampire mages. And that's the whole fix. Just a hard cap there, which I thought was kind of funny. Effective, but not elegant. <laughs> um, so that's it for today. Um, and if you join me next time, um, we'll be taking on Ludios. Uh, I don't know how long that will take, but it might be just one video. So that'll be cool. Um, see you next time. Bye-bye.